like, what is that me? Can I tell you that when, when one has a mannequin of oneself and gets to see one's own terrible posture, it is a particular experience for one. Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave, except that it's a brand new cave. It's not a brand new cave, but it's kind of a brand new cave. There are other videos that are gonna cover how new this cave is, but what has happened is that uh, if you look behind me, you'll see the arrangement looks slightly different. What's going on over here? Oh, oh, oh. Again, there's some other videos about this transformation that have probably already happened and you might have already seen them, but we're just beginning this with, ah, oh, look at crazy how much room there is. I have more than doubled the size of my cave shop. I've gotten rid of all my display stuff. Don't worry, it has been packed carefully and in a way that I can't lose things. Yes. One of the coolest things about this new shop is that I have brought in my other lathe. Other lathe, you say? I didn't realize there was another lathe. So let's just, I wanna go over some lathe history. Um, I learned and cut my teeth on a Shenhui Chieftain uh, 15 by 40 from Jamie Heinemann's shop that he bought from CWI, Chris Wayless's uh, special effects company. Those are the guys that did Naked Lunch and Gremlins and a million other amazing animatronic films. They were incredible in special effects, animatronics, creature stuff. Uh, they closed down in the early 90s. Jamie bought all their tools and that lathe became the lathe that I learned on. And amazingly, when I started making, tele when I was making television money and uh, I got this shop in 2010, I looked out on Craigslist and lo, found my baby, uh, Shen Wai Chieftain. I found the lathe. This is the same exact make and model uh, as Jamie's. And that was great, because it was like a one-to-one -one translation. I didn't need to get to know this machine. And then, when it was time to uh, expand our crew and we hired uh, Carrie, Tori, and Scotty, um, I set up M6, the predecessor to M7, and I went out on Craigslist and found this amazing uh, Shenhui. This is another Shenhui. Same, understand that Shenhui is one brand of several brands of lathes and machine tools made by a Taiwanese company in the 70s and 80s and probably long before that and probably after that. I'm just, I'm pleased at the symmetry of the two lathes being made by the same maker. Now, I lent this lathe to Frank Ippolito like 12 years ago under the proviso that he would just keep it as long as he needed it. Uh, and the only rental I wanted was for his shop to build a rolling stand and they built a beautiful rolling stand for it. Um, I got it back earlier this year, in the new year. We moved it up from LA and put it in storage. And I've been thinking ever since, I really want that lathe back. I want that lathe back in the shop. Remember when I set up the benchtop mill, it was nice to have, it's a nice luxury as a machine operator to have two of both a mill and a lathe, a large and a small, so that you can do some smaller operations without tearing down a setup. But I'm not here to talk about lathe and machine tool philosophy. I'm simply here to add some infrastructure to this new cave arrangement. And so you see all that mm, 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 yummy space underneath the lathe here. I want to fill the space. I want to fill the space with a cabinet. I want to light up that cabinet because lit cabinets are how I keep my cabinets neat. And they'll also even make this whole spot a little bit brighter. Yeah, that's what we're doing. We're building a shop cabinet today for shop infrastructure. I'm just so, uh, so I'm gonna make some drawings of this cabinet. And then I'm gonna figure out how to fill it. And then I'm gonna install it in that order. Here we go.
All right. Now, in uh, past videos, I'm, you have watched me build something, install it, and then discover that I made it the wrong size. So we're gonna install this now. I mean, what I mean is we're gonna test fit it. With the lathe right now with its nice clear back and just make sure it fits. And freedom taste of reality. Fantastic, fantastic. Oh, I see. Great. I figured it out. I figured it out. Um, it was because these things had switches on them and I forgot. But now we've got a nice lid cabinet. I got to put some, you know, and the, and the, and then we'll be, Ooh, yeah. Okay, it's all working. Um, now I need to put in the magnets. Don't put clear tape on your thing, I can't see it.
Very happy. Let's go install it. Oh, oh there's one last, one last. I can put you here. Dude, how about how different the cave is, question mark. Well, now I'm going to do some cleaning of the lathe and uh, get it all fixed up a little bit. Yeah. The lathe, by the way, is powered all the way off. And I'll even pull up the plug. There we go. Now it can't go on. I can't go on. It must go on. Oh, parts washer, that's what I need. Excellent.
there's going to be a lot more cleaning, uh, and that'll be separate. Um, but I will say a couple things that are totally astounding. One is, hold on, I got to get some of this grease from. Um, a couple things. One is that my Deming bit, um, my Deming bit stand is literally flush. I accidentally made it precisely as deep as this. Although I made this exactly 12 inches, so it was a, that's a decision that both I and the other maker of that thing. Uh, so now I'm going to. Um, I don't know how I want to store my. Uh, my multi-fixes, but I'm going to start by just placing them here. Figure out how to store these guys. We'll probably go in spindle holes, but I may need some more of those. That MT2, I believe, is what that is. Here. Is that? No, it's almost everything. Uh, put that there because I'm going to machine that down. That's a tool. That's a tool for right now, so we'll leave that there. I can see what I'm going to do here. So this lathe is great. It's my lathe. It's 20 years old. 20 years old. It's 20 years old at this point. To me, I've had it for 20 years and this thing was probably made in the early 70s. Anyway, the lathe sounds great. It doesn't sound great. You know what's going to happen? What's going to happen is, is that I think Wednesday, I may come in here and I come up to this and I may, I may pull all of that out of there. I may, yeah, let's take a look. I may pull all of this malarkey out of here and uh, wash all the gearing and tune this thing back to, uh, yeah. That sounds like there's a couple bearings that are shot in there. I should be able to replace those or fix their persuasion. Um, it's a lot of noise for this machine and I think I can get it quieter. Uh, and weirdly, after almost losing my finger over COVID, I feel more qualified to crack into the, uh, the main body of a Shen Y. Um, but I'm not gonna do that now because I got someone coming in a few minutes. Uh, and I'm not going to do it tomorrow because we're shooting a live stream. But, but, under, and none of this was what this video was about. Um, the under cabinet is now finished. The cabinet itself. Uh, the dressing of this under cabinet needs a bunch of work. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up putting, having these multi-fix, uh, I'm going to have these multi-fix tool holders all sitting like brrr, like stadium seating right here. I'm going to have a full complement of MT2 centers. Um, I've got a redundancy there. Uh, I could use a bigger chuck. I could use a automatic chuck with an MT2. I could use a uh, couple of other things. Oh, right. Also, there's this guy and this needs a... Um, I need to buy a four jaw chuck for this lathe. That's the other part. Yeah, I need a four jaw chuck for this because that will. This will be fun. Um, I think I may even strip out the whole carriage here and just wash everything, oil it, grease it, put it back together. See if I can't make it a better lathe. That'll be really fun. Anyway, thank you for joining me for this bit of infrastructure. Oh, look at how much room there is. Oh. Hi, R2. All right.
Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build of the lid cabinet. And I will see you next time. Cheers. I can't thank you enough for supporting us by watching the channel. If you've been to our merch store, you might want to head there again because we are always updating our roster with new products. Here is the anime-inspired tested logo in Japanese, my, one of my all-time favorite new designs. Uh, we're also selling tested mugs and tested hats. Oh, and if you want a cup of tea, we're selling that too. Tested-store.com. Tested-store.com.